And in business, Nigeria has moved to the 131st position in the World Bank's 2018-2019 Ease of Doing Business report. This is 15 points above its initial 146th position. This puts Nigeria amongst the top 10 economies, improving in three or more areas. The report explained that Nigeria conducted reforms impacting six indicators, including making the enforcement of contracts easier, which placed the 200 million person economy among the world's top improvers. Only two sub-Saharan African economic rank in the top 50 on the ease of doing business rankings, while most of the bottom 20 economies in the global rankings are from the region. Meanwhile, in the last few years, at least after the global recession, the international tax space has been very strategic in its drive to achieve increased transparency in the tax practices of multinational enterprises and individuals. This brought about the base erosion and profit shifting project by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. This move is expected to curb tax avoidance and evasion and encourage transparency via increased disclosure of sensitive information by MNEs and individuals. Nigeria has signed up to the Multilateral Competent Authority Agreement on the Automatic Exchange of Country by Country Report and Automatic Exchange of Financial Account Information. This simply means it's no longer business as usual for taxpayers. Here in the studio with me is Emmanuel Onasomi. He is the manager of transfer pricing services at Anderson Tax. Thank you so much for joining me, Emmanuel. Thank you for having me. All right, so qu quickly, give me the, just give us the background story behind Nigeria signing the multilateral competent uh, authority agreement. Yeah, to provide a background on this subject, I would like to bring our mind back to the global recession that happened in 2708, where the, where the financial crisis that led the government running around for funds to run their government. And, you know, the EU, the G20, through the United Nations, and with collaboration with the OECD, felt the need to curb some of the activities that multinational enterprises and individuals are using to erode tax bases in, in the respective jurisdiction. Okay. And, you know, if you're familiar with a tax haven, a tax-friendly zone where multinationals actually put some minimal activities for the purpose of uh, reducing their effective tax rate, thereby shortchanging the economies where the economy, actual economic activities are actually happening. So mm -hmm. they came up with the best project, which has three pillars. And one of the pillars for the best projects is transparency. transparency. The other two pillars is coherence and substance. So is, uh, the transparency speaks to the fact that before now we are unable to have a global picture of what multinationals are doing and what their actual income from the activities from a respective collective location. actual income uh, yes mm -hmm. from a respective location. So transparently, uh, transparency speaks to the drive by the whole ECD and the United Nations to to ensure that disclosure are made more detailed and gives a clear picture about the global activities of businesses. So Nigeria is not far away from this. Nigeria has, uh, has demonstrated their willingness to cooperate with the OECD and the United Nations on, on some of these developments. If you could recall, in 2015, uh, Mr. Babatunde Fowler signed multiple multilateral agreements, which, agreements. Speaks to, which gives Nigeria the opportunity to now share and receive information with other jurisdictions as it relates to the taxpayers. And uh, last year, the country... So, for, yeah. for viewers to understand this, I have a business in other regions as well. Now I can get easy access as a government. I can get easy access to know how much it is my business that somebody's business in some other country is making so that I know that you are paying the actual tax. Yeah, so that, that speaks to one of, the, one of the things that they are currently doing to drive transparency. Recently in July, the FRS published the Common Reporting Standard Regulation, which speaks, yes, I saw that. Uh, which speaks to the fact that uh, financial institutions now have obligations to disclose certain financial details, such as your your type of income, your streams of income, your balances, your your tax jurisdiction to the tax authority, which will then be shared across this country that are party to this ag agreement. This speaks to the fact that, at a glance, the tax authority, wherever your account, your bank account are located, whatever country they, they it is, can now have a glance of uh, a glimpse of what your global income looks like and what the tax should be. What happens if you have a company in one of those countries that, you know, their tax laws are quite simplified? They are not as cumbersome as other regions. 
Yeah, so what the people have done in the past is that they look at tax-friendly zones, meaning countries where they are more friendly when it comes to paying taxes and maybe their tax rate is also Mauritius, very, very minimal. So right. the examples are the Mauritius, mm. and the Isle of Man, the, the Jesse, you know. But, we, but what we've seen in recent times is that uh, those countries also, they found out that the, 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 the policy that was put in place, the objective of making those zones tax-friendly are not being achieved by the government. Okay. What the government expected is that there should be some f foreign direct investment into, into those jurisdictions because they won't be paying tax. But what they found out is that uh, multinational just incorporate lecture bus company. You see, you just engage a lawyer to incorporate the mm. company and, and begin to move uh, resources in that, into that jurisdiction. So the government, too, they are, they are wary that they, key, they are currently keen into this move by the OEC to ensure that even we've called, even though we've called ourselves a, a task friendly institution, we want to ensure that the objective of making this zone friendly nice. is maximized. Now, you did mention something about financial institutions. Are we just are we talking about just um, deposit money banks? What are the what financial institutions are involved? So the CRS regulation actually uh, took its uh, power, uh, the strength. And major, the majorly the recommendations from the whole is the common reporting standard. Standards. So the common, uh, the common reporting standard regulation defined the four, four broad category of financial institutions that are liable under these uh, CRS regulations, and they include the depository institution, which speaks directly to but your to banks, banks okay. that you have. You have the investment houses, so all these asset management companies. So there's no hiding uh, for anybody. So whether you choose to go to the bank and put your money with the bank or with the investment houses or with custodial houses okay. or even with specialized, some kind of specialized insurance uh, products, then you will be captured under this uh, regulation. So there's really no place where you'd hide your money and say, oh, okay, um, they'll, pos they'll possibly not find us. And then for these financial institutions that do not deem it fit to present these reports when necessary, what, what are the penalties for them? So the CRS regulation clearly specify the obligations under the regulation. So the RFI needs to be abreast with this uh, obligation. First, you have to first identify which accounts you have to report, perform some due diligence, make some documentation. And in the event that you've done this, then you have mm -hmm. to file what we call the information return uh, by 31st of, uh, of May of every, of every year. So if you fail to do this, I think according to the regulation, the minimum penalty that you can be exposed to is 10 million naira. That's a whole lot. Yeah. And I think subsequent months as well, you still be charged. Yeah. So if if you if you uh, the month in the first month of default, you pay 10 million naira and 1 million for every subsequent month that you continue to default. Yeah. All right. So uh, what does this portend for taxpayers who run multiple businesses in various countries? So I would like to put it in this way. I'm a Nigerian business. I provide service to people both locally and both internationally. Mm -hmm. But for the purpose of uh, my administration, I have multiple bank accounts, even in different jurisdictions. Before now, if I filed my tax return without the FRS having a poor view of my account in other jurisdictions, they may just want to rely on the local uh, account uh, information. Okay. Okay. But now with this regulation, what the FRS will be able to have access to is the global income of myself as a business in Nigeria. So that means that the FRS will be able to have information about the service I provided to a customer in Brazil and pay to my account in Brazil because the Brazilian authority must have shared this information with the tax authority. So it is high time for businesses to reevaluate uh, their strategies around uh, their tax planning to be more compliant in nature and also ensure that uh, they achieve their business objectives. All right, so basically we are expecting that with this uh, strategy in place, the FIRS should meet up with their plans for the tax targets by the end of this year. You know, the, the government has <laughs> increased drive to, to raise uh, our tax to GDP ratio. You mm. know, there's this concern on ground and, you know, that is why the, the, the government is not shining away from every opportunity to block these li li uh, leakages, you know. Mm. So, and that's why from time from time, we understand that even in the works, there are still many agreements that, that may still be signed by the government to ensure that some of these BEPS recommendations are implemented in Nigeria. So businesses need to be aware of what the BEPS project is all about and how the OECD uh, is actually taking it. And how Nigeria is keen into this initiative to ensure that it's tax to GDP ratio increase. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much for Thank joining us for and all of the clarity. Thank you so much.